Commercially available wearable biosensors have the potential to provide detailed longitudinal data documenting patients' health and their progress during treatment or rehabilitation, instead of more labor-intensive, invasive, and expensive alternatives. For instance, sleep apnea could be quickly diagnosed with a lightweight wearable that measures heart rate, breathing volume, and snoring, instead of a heavy polysomnograph. Wearables containing inertial measurement units could be used to assess people's ability to ambulate safely and independently during specific movement tasks. And, driven by the size of the glucose sensing market and the increasing number of people with diabetes, a lot of investment has been made into developing minimally invasive glucose monitoring devices for the consumer. Progress balancing clinical and market validation has been limited to four main areas. Physical activity tracking, the evaluation of sleep, ECG monitoring or the evaluation of atrial fibrillation, and finally, diabetes and continuous blood glucose monitoring. These devices provide an objective quantitative mirror for patients about their current habits and the improvements that they can achieve when they focus their efforts on increasing their physical activity levels. However, the interventions involving pedometers and smartphone apps across clinical populations show limited evidence of continued behavioral change beyond the duration of the original intervention. And then there's a budding area of research involving the use of inertial measurement units, wearables that contain accelerometers, gyroscopes, and sometimes magnetometers to evaluate movement quality during physical activity or during specific tasks. For instance, wearables have been used to quantify performance during the six minute walk test, a submaximal exercise test, which involves walking continuously for six minutes along a 30 meter walkway. The traditional outcome for this test is the distance walked by the patient in the six minute time frame. The quantified version of the test that is performed with the wearable biosensor might give information about the patient's walking symmetry or their turning technique as they go up and down the walkway. Wearable sensors containing inertial measurement units have also been used to evaluate the biomechanics of gait technique. The issue with these biomechanical outcomes, whether we're talking about symmetry or technique, is that it is unclear if they actually add anything to the clinical test. With the exception of proof of concept or exploratory studies, the reality is that there is currently no research in existence linking these kinds of biomechanical measures with real world quality of life treatment or performance outcomes, and that is true of clinical populations, athletes, and the general public. Actigraphy involves the use of an accelerometer to objectively measure sleep. Compared with the gold standard of sleep tracking, polysomnography, actigraphy is very accurate for identifying the period of sleep, but it is less accurate for identifying sleep onset and periods of wakefulness. Specifically, when actigraphy is compared with polysomnography, its accuracy is approximately 90% for total sleep time, but only 55% for determining the correct sleep stage. A large number of consumer wearable devices purport to assess sleep-wake periods, total sleep time, and even sleep stages. Although the data are not entirely consistent, most studies have found that consumer wearable devices overestimate total sleep time and sleep efficiency and underestimate wake after sleep onset compared with polysomnography. Some devices use photoplethysmography, the same technology that is used to monitor your heart rate by measuring blood flow in tissue over time via flashing light emitting diodes or LEDs. Others use a combination of movement and heart rate variability data which fluctuates and correlates with wakefulness and the different sleep stages. Manufacturers' applications can then integrate these data to display sleep information to the user and may also include benchmark data for what is considered normal. A position statement from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine encourages clinicians to become familiar with the disadvantages and potential benefits of consumer sleep technologies, including wearable devices. When it comes to commercially available wearable heart rhythm monitors, these devices can be useful in the diagnosis of arrhythmia in certain patients. 
Most come in the form of wearable wristbands and smartwatches, optical sensors integrated into the device use photoplethysmography to measure pulse rate, a rapid rise in heart rate that is associated with specific symptoms can help detect arrhythmias such as supraventricular tachycardia or atrial fibrillation. Studies of assessing the effectiveness of smartwatch-based photoplethysmography algorithms for the detection of atrial fibrillation are ongoing, but the current research is promising. Smartwatches are also now able to record single-lead ECGs by using electrodes built into the back of the watch and a finger from the opposite hand placed onto an electrode built into the watch band to complete the circuit. Blood glucose monitoring is important for diabetics to determine how much insulin to take or how much food to eat. There's also been a recent proliferation of healthy people who like to track their blood glucose levels out of curiosity or in an effort to improve their general wellness. Traditionally, to assess their blood glucose levels, diabetics need to prick their finger and let a drop of blood touch a disposable test strip in a meter that electrochemically analyzes and reports the glucose content. For someone with type 1 diabetes, that might need to occur 10 times a day. It hurts and over time leaves scar tissue on the fingertips, and it only gives diabetics snapshots of their blood glucose, rather than continuous readings. Non-invasive continuous glucose recorders could not only provide patients with instantaneous readings on which they can act, but could also provide the healthcare professional with weekly summaries detailing how often their patient has remained within the desired blood glucose range. By guiding treatment using time and range, continuous glucose data can provide a much more accurate outcome measure of how their patient is managing their blood glucose levels. The problem is largely one of physiology. Consider the nature of sweat, tears and saliva. These fluids vary throughout the day and are affected by external factors like airflow across the skin, humidity, hydration and activity. Sweat varies from one spot to another on the body, may need to be elicited and gets contaminated by things like skin creams and lotions. Given the challenges of tears, sweat and saliva, Many researchers have turned to optical or spectroscopic techniques to measure glucose in tissue. The way that light is absorbed or scattered by tissue can reveal aspects of the tissue's microstructure, as well as the chemicals present and their molecular environment. But glucose's subtle optical signatures get buried amongst those of blood and melanin, which are both highly absorbing and are highly variable from person to person. And therein lies the issue facing engineers. Getting the wearable solutions to work on the body, every body, all of the time, is extremely challenging. Not just for blood glucose monitoring, but also for evaluating movement biomechanics, cardiovascular health, sleep, and a range of other health-related outcomes.